Good evening, everybody. How are you tonight? Seven of you are awake. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad that uh, we're in for a wonderful time. God is good to us. Amen. And uh, God, boy, you didn't you enjoy the wonderful day that we had, our friends and family day, and then celebrating our pastor's anniversary. And uh, it's just a wonderful day to be able to do that this past Sunday. Looking forward to this Lord's Day coming up, and I'm looking forward to how God is just orchestrating everything right along the same lines as he always does. And that's what I love about Harvest Baptist Tabernacle, us being able to say, hey, we want to worship God, but we want God to have his way and his will done in every one of the services that are here at our church. So we'll get started this evening how we always begin. Let's all stand because you always sing better, praise the Lord, standing up. And especially if you eat like I do, it's better to go ahead and stand up. Amen. And uh, so we'll go ahead, we'll stand. And this, uh, this good song, page number 240, if you have a book in front of you, when the roll is called up yonder, where are you going to be? Amen. Praise God. I'll be there. Come on, Brother Don, you leave. Amen. Let's sing this great hymn tonight. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the morning of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather over on the other shore. The roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. Yonder I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder when the road is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there Amen Amen Let's remain standing if you will and uh, let's sing uh, page number 139 and if you don't have a book or don't care to pick up that book it's at Calvary now, I'm going to give you a little history on this, uh, this song. This is my all-time favorite hymn in this red back hymnal, and it was copyrighted in 1895. Now, that's been a long time ago, Brother Earl, but I'll tell you one thing about God's music is it don't get old. It just keeps getting better and better. Amen. And the older I get, the more uh, these songs mean to me and uh, should be to you as well. But listen, let's sing this great hymn, At Calvary, page number 139. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Years I spent in vanity and pride Caring not my Lord was crucified Knowing not it was for me he died On Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free Pardon multiplied to me There my burden so found liberty At Calvary by God's word at last my 
my sin I learned Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned Till my guilty soul imploring turned To Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Let's sing it all. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. We'll sing this last verse, but I want to tell you about a Thursday night. Back in the 1950s, I went to an old tent revival. Had sawdust on the floor. Folding chairs, they were metal. But I tell you, that was the night that the preacher preached and I was convicted of my sins as a teenage boy. I accepted Jesus and I've been told I've not been the same since. Amen. And what he's done for me, he'll do for you. Praise God. Amen. Listen, how many like free things? I like stuff when you get it free. I love it when they hand out those free samples at... Uh, Sam's and stuff. I go there and, and uh, eat dinner sometimes. But listen, that night when I got saved, I did not have a nickel in my pocket. I couldn't have paid. If it cost me a penny, I couldn't have bought salvation that night. But oh, thanks be to God that night that he, he bid me come and I came and I knelt to that old metal folding chair and uh, uh, brushed off that old sawdust on my blue jeans when I got up. But praise God, he's been real ever since. Let's sing this last verse. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was part and there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Glory to God. You go ahead and be seated once again. Uh, just a good time to be able to be in God's house. And uh, we have a lot to be in prayer for, so you make sure that you remember uh, there's a lot of things going on, and uh, you pray for uh, the folks that are uh, in, in standing in need. Now, specifically, Brother Mickey tomorrow is going to be having a procedure done. We want to make sure that we lift him up to the Lord in prayer, and uh, you just uh, let the Lord uh, have his will and way. But, of, of course, we pray that God would lead and guide and direct as that procedure is done. Uh, and to make sure that God's will is there, uh, to make sure that the, the doctors are minding what, uh, what they can do and just give them the wisdom to be able to do that. And uh, y'all have to pray for me. Uh, I turned 43 yesterday, and uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I, Sister Heather already told me, I, 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 there's something in your hair. And she said, oh, no, that's gray. Well, that's not fair. They're funny. Hey, ma'am. Uh, but uh, I'm telling you, uh, y'all pray for me, and I'll go ahead, and y'all just, everybody wants to say it to me, you can go ahead, the Yankees lost. It'll be okay, and uh, we'll just go ahead and clear the air so we can have service tonight. Praise the Lord, and uh, mind God. But I'm so glad that you are here, and those of you that are joining us by way of the internet, thank you so much for being here as well, and uh, we just pray that God would be in that place of worship with you tonight as well. We're going to go, Lord, in prayer. Brother Don's going to come around and lead us in one more song, and then uh, we got a special before we get up to preach, and I'm excited about what God has given to us tonight. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you would have your will and your way during this service tonight. God, I pray that you would just touch each and every household that's represented here. 
Lord, there's many that have already told me about their uh, burdens, God. And Lord, we're sharing those burdens to get today, Lord. And right now, we want to cast our cares upon you, God, because you care for us. And God, you told us to cast those cares. And you do love us and care for us. And you have mercy and grace to be able to bestow upon us tonight. And Lord, we look forward to uh, being able to give those over to you, God. We come boldly before the throne of grace, God. We lift up Brother Mickey right now. Lord, I pray that you would just touch his body. Lord, I pray that you would be with those doctors and nurses, God, as they uh, touch him. And Lord, uh, as they uh, do this procedure, God, I pray that you'd give them wisdom, direction that they would go in. Lord, I pray that you would just touch uh, each and every person that's here tonight. God, I pray that, uh, Lord, I know that it's hard to get here on Wednesday night. And God, I know it's difficult for them, uh, for everyone to be able to come and be a part of the service. And those that are joining online that, that wanted to be here just wasn't able to make it. But God, I pray that you'd put a special blessing upon everyone that is here tonight. God, I pray that you'd give exactly what they need tonight during this time. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And it's in Christ's name that we pray all these things. Amen and amen. Come on, Brother Don. And you can lead us in one more good song. And uh, we'll let you sit down on this one. And uh, those of you at home, we'll make sure that you can sit down as well. Praise the Lord. And we'll have a good time. Come on, Brother Don. You lead. All right, uh, we, we won't stand up this time. We're just going to let y'all rest. Amen. One of these days, we'll live in glory together. Page number 202, I'll live in glory. Yes. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, and oh yes, I live in glory. By and by, I tell it, sing love story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I live in glory. By and by. And lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever nigh. And live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell it, sing love story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing. By faith I look away to yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky and spend the endless ages in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory. By and by, I'll tell him, sing love story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory. By and by. Are you looking forward to living there someday? Amen. Where there's no death, no parting, no sickness, none of these things that we're having to deal with here on this side. We won't have to deal with any of those things. Praise God. I'm looking forward to that day. We got a good special. You come on up here. Sister Loretta is going to sing for us tonight as she takes us into preaching time and you pray for her. And uh, I'm excited to be able to uh, listen to her sing. And boy, she got a beautiful voice and you just pray for her. She takes us in. You get your Bible out. John chapter number 13 is where we're going to be, so uh, you go ahead and get ready, and we're going to go right into it. As soon as she gets done, you pray for Sister Loretta. Thank you, Sister Loretta. Leave it there. Leave it there. 
If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. So take your burden. If the world from you withholds all its silver, all its gold, and if you have to get along on bigger fare, well, just remember his word, how he feeds the little birds, so take your burden to the Lord and leave it there, and if your body suffers pain, if your health you can't regain, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. My Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save. I know he can heal, so take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Oh, take your burden. That's a blessing right there, amen? And uh, isn't it wonderful that we can just leave our burdens right there? John chapter number 13, it just goes right along with what we're going to use this as a launching verse, not necessarily textual taking, taking this verse, but using it as a launching pad uh, this evening. I'm thankful that uh, when I don't understand what is going on in my life, God knows what's best. Just like she just got through singing, Sister Loretta, thank you so much, that was wonderful. But uh, just like she's singing, leaving our burdens right there, taking those requests, making them known to the Lord. And Brother Steve, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times that's where we get in trouble is we, we come down to the altar and we pray and we feel like we set it there and then we, Brother Jose, we grab it, we pick it up and we go right back to the pew with it. But God wants us to cast it on Him throw it at him, give it all to him and let him take care of everything uh, and not to ha for us to shoulder any of that burden but to give it all to him. Praise the Lord. John chapter number 13 this evening. Turn with me there. John chapter number 13 verse number 1 is where I'm going to begin. Now uh, I was told to slow down. I was told that somebody was going to put a dead battery in me so I would slow down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try to my best to do that. But I get excited about the Word of God. And when I get excited about the Word of God, I start going 90 to nothing. Now, uh, now some of you might, you can say amen. And the more you say amen, then probably the faster I'll get. Now, I just probably, I probably just stopped everybody from saying amen tonight. Uh, but 
uh, I tell you, I get excited about uh, what the Word of God has to say. Look with me. If you're there, there in John chapter number 13, say amen with me. Amen. All right, I'll go faster. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter number 13, verse number 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of, his, out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after that he poureth water into a basin, he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered, verse number 7, and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Listen to the words of Jesus one more time. What Jesus says to Peter, What I do that thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I beg you, God, that you'd have your will in your way right now during this service. Lord, we come to you. We bathe the service in prayer, God. We pray and we beg that the Holy Spirit of God would come down and hover over this place. God, I pray that it would just brood over this sanctuary tonight. God, touch those that are watching by the way of the Internet. God, I pray that you would brood over where their place of worship is tonight. God, I pray that you would bless our pastor, God, as he is out preaching tonight. God, I pray that you'd lift him up. Lord, I pray you'd fill him with the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that the people that he is preaching to would be blessed with what God you give to him tonight. And God, I thank you, God, that you can be there where Brother Joe is preaching tonight. But God, you're so mighty, you're so powerful, you're so uh, majestic that you can be here as well tonight. And God, I beg you, God, that you would just uh, have your will, God, with me, God, my mouth and my mind as I preach the word of God. God tonight and it's in Christ's name that we pray all these things amen and amen and I begin to look through these verses and look through those very first seven verses of chapter number 13 and John I begin to look and Jesus was speaking to his disciples during this time he became the lowly servant to them the lowest part in the house that the, the lowest part the lowest servant at that time he humbled himself now, uh, we can tell people to be humble all the time. We try to tell people to be humble all the time. I heard one man say, I'm probably the most humble man you've ever met. Ain't that blessing? Praise God. But there are people that we try to teach, and, and the best way to teach is how Jesus Christ was doing it. He wasn't telling them. He wasn't making a statement to do it, but he was performing. He was showing them the very act of becoming that very humble servant the God of all creation the God that he created each and every one of those disciples were, was now humbling himself so far down that he was washing the feet of the disciples and Peter says I know who you are I understand who you are and I can't believe that you would humble yourself in such a way and Jesus Christ makes a statement that you don't know what I'm doing right now but you will know someday. And I'll be honest with you, Brother Steve, there's a lot of things that are happening in 2020 that I didn't know what God was doing. And I'll be honest with you, in 2021, I still don't know what God is doing. But I do know this, Brother Earl, that God is mighty. God is powerful. God is in control. God knows exactly where I am. God knows exactly where you are tonight. And he is making a way. Romans 8, 28 is still in the Bible. Whether you realize it or not, the storm that you may be going through tonight, you may be on the mountaintop. And I will to be honest with you. I love being on the mountaintop. I love being able to praise God. I love being able to lift my hands in praise. But there are times, Brother Earl, when I'm in the valley. And it's those same times that I have to lift my hands. I heard, I heard this, this afternoon, I was walking down the hallway, and I heard, even in the valley, God is good. <laughs> 
And, and I'll be honest with you, when I look over, one of my favorite places is the eastern valley of Tennessee. You come over uh, the top of this mountain, and when you come over the top of it, it opens up and you see the eastern valley of Tennessee. And it's just majestic when you see that. And I'll be honest with you, it's not the mountains that make it so beautiful. It's not the high tops that make it so beautiful. It's the valleys that make it so gorgeous. And so it is with our life that when we go through those mountains, what, what God is orchestrating and bringing together those low times, those difficult times, those valleys that we were going through, God is making something beautiful in our life. And what he was going and he was doing this, he was teaching his disciples and, and Peter was objecting to Jesus Christ the Savior and Jesus spoke to him and, and he's saying this simple phrase, I know you don't know what's going on right now, but I do. I, how many of you like the peanuts? Yeah, not peanuts that you eat, but the peanuts, Charlie Brown peanuts, amen. You say, Brother Shane, where are you going with that? I'm leading you somewhere. I love this. I saw this. It said the circumstances of life often, I'll be honest with you, my circumstances of life often I don't understand what's happening. But many times there's like, like Charlie Brown, Lucy is telling us Charlie Brown, she says something like this to him. Sometimes I feel like we're not communicating. It sounds like my wife talking to me, to be honest with you. Sometimes I feel like we're not communicating. You, Charlie Brown, are a foul ball in the drive line of life. You're often in the shadows of your own goal line and uh, goal post and a miscue. You're a three putt on the 18th green. Well, if you didn't play golf, you wouldn't have to worry about that anyway. Praise the Lord. You are a 7-10 split on the 10th frame. You have dropped the rod and reel in the lake of life. You're a missed free throw. You're a shank nine iron, a called third strike, a bug on the windshield of life. Do you understand? Have I made myself clear? My goodness. Lucy was awfully difficult and hard on Charlie Brown, but life is often hard on us and difficult on us, and there are a lot of things that, that happen in my life that I just don't understand, and I can't understand what's going on, but I have to believe that God knows exactly what's happening in our life. We don't understand that the trials and tribulations, we don't understand the temptations, but we can solely and powerfully depend upon that the God that we serve is still on the throne in heaven, that no one has un unseated him, that no no one has tried to overcome him that no one is able to overcome him and what is happening in our life is an orchestration of what God is desiring to happen in our life right now now I understand that there are circumstances in people's life all over as I look around this room tonight and people that I know are watching online that there are people that are going through circumstances right now that we just don't understand that we don't know why I'll be honest with you I don't understand why some people live and some people do not live and God calls some people home. I don't understand when there's sickness and why there is sickness. There's a lot of those things that I can understand, but I trust that God knows exactly what he's doing. You say, Brother Shane, that's easy preaching. Amen. But when you live it, it's when it's real to you. And the circumstances that you're going through tonight, I want to tell you, that God, and I don't know why I'm preaching this tonight. I'll be honest with you. I just feel like this is the way God was wanting me to go, and I've had liberty about this for the last couple of days, and, and, and God has given to us uh, exactly the way that, that, that I say, God, I don't understand what's happening, but God, you're in control, and I'm, on, I'm just going to trust you. You say, well, what do you do when you don't understand? Well, when you don't understand, this is real simply, real simply, real simply put, you trust him. You just trust him. That's hard to do. It's hard to trust people. We live in a world where we can't trust anybody. We can't trust anything. I remember that there was a world that I never really grew up in, but I heard that there was a world that when a man shook your hand, that was as good as it got. And now you have to have not only the handshake, but you have to have legal paperwork to back it up, it seems like. That you have to have everything in it. The handshake is not it. You can't just trust somebody the way that you could trust people back in the day. I heard the story of a, a young man was selling them watermelons, and he said, uh, I'm going to sell you this watermelon. He said, I definitely want one of those watermelons. How much do you want for that watermelon? He said, I want a dollar and ten cents for the watermelon. I'm thinking... Why would you sell a watermelon for a dollar and ten cents? Why not just a dollar, round it off, and it's much easier? 
But the young man said, well, I don't, have, I don't have quite what I need. I don't have that. I have a dollar, but I don't have, uh, uh, I have the 10 cents, and, and, uh, but I'm not going to be able to give it all to you right now. And he says, well, I'll trust you for it. Well, the guy gave him the 10 cents and said, I'll come back with a dollar. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm not going to do that. He says, young man, that's not trust at all. That's just a gamble on a, a 10 cents, if you'll trust me for the 10 cents. See, a lot of times when we say, I'm going to trust God for this, or I'm going to trust you for this, or I'm going to trust this person for this, we trust them just as far as we can stand to have pain. Did y'all, y'all hear what I just said? We trust him just enough, but we need to give it all to him. Give it completely over to what God's saying. I, I, I'll give, it, give you more than anything. You didn't trust me at all, this young man says. You're, you're going for that 10-cent gamble. No, we need to make sure that we're not going for a 10-cent gamble when it comes to God. We need to make sure that, God, I'm giving over every part of my life. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving my family to you. I'm giving my career to you. I'm giving everything, God, and I'm going to trust you with what you have because, God, I know that you know better than I do. See, we don't understand going through something. As a matter of fact, in Psalm chapter number 56, verse number 3, it says this, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Have you ever been afraid? (laughs) Have you ever been just absolutely scared of what's going on in your life? And you needed somebody that you could trust and you needed somebody that you could lean on and you needed somebody that that they're really going to make a difference in your life, but then all of a sudden... You looked around and there was nobody there. (laughs) At 3 o'clock in the morning when you tried to look around to see if there was somebody to help you that night, that there was nobody there. And at 7 o'clock the next morning when you were trying to get ready and go on and move on with your life and you realize that there's nobody that's there. And and, and, and I think of people that lose loved ones. And and I'll be honest with you, it's the most difficult thing when people lose their loved ones. And and to be honest with you, in my experience, Brother Steve, the most, the most common thing is people call for about three weeks after the loss of that loved one, after the burial, after the funeral is done, and then about three weeks, they're gone. And then, <laughs> and then you're looking around and you're trying to figure out, I've still lost that loved one. I still have this hole in my life and I I still need something in my life and and I need somebody. Then all of a sudden, (laughs) Brother Poole, somebody greater. (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory to God. If y'all get excited, glory to God, we might just blow the roof off this place. But (laughs) then all of a sudden, somebody greater gets in. Somebody greater begins to touch you and somebody greater begins to wrap their arms of mercy around you and and at 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. When God shows up, then all of a sudden you can say, I found somebody that I can trust. I found somebody that I can lean on. I found somebody that will be there every step of the way. God is someone and something that we can trust in the midst of trials and tribulations. We look at these times, you say, well, what is it? How's the time to depend on in times of pressure? Have you ever been in an immense pressure before in your lifetime? See, Job chapter number 13, verse number 15 says this uh, Though he slay me, I will trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. Though he slay me. Job was going through such a detrimental time in his life. Everything was going great. And then all of a sudden, one messenger after another messenger after another messenger. Now, he was not privy, Brother Poole, to the meeting that Satan and God had had in heaven. He didn't know what was going up there. All of a sudden, he just knows that messengers are coming to his life and messengers are telling him that the sheep are gone and the camels are gone and they've come and they've, they've raided and there's been a fire that came down from heaven and there's all these things that are happening and, and by the way, your, your children are all dead and everything that you had, it's gone. Begin to look around and you say, well, how did Job respond? Well, to be honest with you, we have that great story to be able to read and be able to say the very very first thing in the very first chapter that we have, Job chapter number 1, verse number 21, he says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Hmm. Brother Nick, I pray that if God... I don't ever want to be in a conversation between God and the devil. 
I truly don't. But if God takes away, I pray that I'd have the strength to be able to say, Lord, you gave it to me. God, you could take it away. The sovereignty of God is a very real thing. The sovereignty of God, the God that, that is in charge of all these things. Job was able to say, the Lord giveth, the Lord takes away. Job had everything and then God allowed tribulation to hit his home and he lost it all. Hmm. Job chapter number 19, verse number 25. We begin to look at what's going on in Job's life and he begins to say this. I know my Redeemer liveth. <laughs> That's assurance. That's something greater than I hope my Redeemer lives. That's something greater than I'm pretty sure that my Redeemer lives. But no, he is actually saying, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that the God of this universe loves me, cares for me. I know he's right. I don't understand what's going on in my life. But right now, I just have to say, God, I praise you. God, I love you. God, I give you glory for whatever's happening in my life. I give you the glory and I trust you with what's going on today. Or in that time of pressure. But I love how the book of Job, Job in chapter number 42, if you got your Bible, go ahead and turn over there with me. In the book of Job, chapter number 42, it, it's all summing everything up. It comes to an, a, a climax there, and Job begins to talk to God. And I love what he says. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. Can I say, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. That's the truth, Job. You're speaking truth right now. You're speaking truth into my life. You're speaking truth in the lives of people thousands of years later down the road that God can do all things. Then look with me. It says, I, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that what I understood not. The things too wonderful for me which I knew not. When it all comes to a climax, when it all comes to an end, Job says, I didn't understand God, but I still trust you. I didn't understand God, but you're still on the throne. You're still in control. You're still the sovereign God of this universe. There is something to this. And, and thank God that we have to stand on it. In the end, Job is standing firm on this simple thing. I trust you. I trust you, God. I trust you in the pressure times. I also trust you that there's a process to everything. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 is not just an old song from the birds, I believe it was. It's Bible. For everything there is a season. There are times that we go through in our life. There are times that I have seen it, it absolutely just the glory has come down, that God has blessed abundantly and there's been wonderful things that have been happening. But then I have seen that I felt like, Lord, where'd you go? I know y'all are thinking, Brother Shane, you're a preacher. You're not supposed to feel like that. I'm human. I'm a person. And just because God has put the place a call of preaching on my life doesn't mean that I'm some superhuman. People that get up behind the pulpits are human flesh that just have to get to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and get to tell others how wonderful God has been. And thank God that not only can I just say it by reading it, but I have... I have felt it and I have experienced it and I have had the times where, Brother Jose, I had to just say, God, I trust you. That I don't understand what this process is, but I trust you for it. See, we trust God what he directs us to do and sometimes you would think that there's no way that God's leading the right way. You say, well, can you back that up with Bible? Now put yourself in this. Can you imagine? We... we I don't want to use names because I'll get in trouble. You imagine the young preacher boy of our church comes in one Sunday and says, God has told me to marry this questionable lady. And I'll be honest with you, every one of us would be sitting here saying, well, he needs to reconsult with God because God wouldn't tell him to do that. But Hosea 
was told. Do this. Do this for me so you can show uh, what, what, what is going on between me and, and my people. Show them. We would begin to say, can you say, Hosea, uh, what are you thinking, Hosea? Why are you doing this? And then all of a sudden we see that in the great scheme of things, in the process of things, God had a reason. God had a plan. See, the blind man trusted Jesus Christ as Savior when he told him what to do. In John chapter number 9, the Bible says this, When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made a clay of spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is to be by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed, and guess what? And came seeing. I will be honest with you, I believe that, but Brother Steve, you're, you're, you're also one of these men. That it didn't, it didn't take the process. When that blind man began to go and began to by faith trust that God, what he said was going to happen, he trusted him, that he knew that if I do what Jesus Christ told me to do, you may be here tonight and you may be going through a trial, you may be going through a tribulation, you may go through some most awful thing that you've ever faced in your life, but just trust what God is telling you to do. Just trust what Jesus Christ has told you to do and go on for the glory of God. That blind man, had, not, had he not trusted, he never would have seen the Savior. And if we don't trust God, there's things that we will never be able to see on this side if we just don't trust what God has told us to do. Not only are we supposed to trust Him, but what do we do when we don't understand? We obey. <laughs> Obedience is something that most of us are taught at a young age. To be honest with you, Brother Earl, I feel like some parents have forgotten how to trust or how to teach obedience. We need to be able to teach obedience to young people. We're given an instruction book. This is what you're supposed to do. This is the direction that you're supposed to go in. This is, a, this is what I have commanded you to do. I heard a long time ago, if you don't understand, you don't know what to do now, just do what you've been doing until God tells you to do something different. And a lot of times we have to keep going on for the Lord, saying, God, this is the last thing that I know that you told me to do, and I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep obeying you. I'm going to keep trusting you. I'm going to keep going in that direction. Not, a, not many of us have those wonderful Joshua moments. Joshua chapter number 1, look at these, one of these verses, chapter number if you have your Bible, turn over there. It says, only be strong and very courageous. What an amazing statement from the angel of the Lord to tell Joshua, only that be thou strong and courageous. Don't be anything else. Don't be anything other than strong. Don't be anything other than courageous. Don't have any doubt whatsoever in your mind. Why? Because I am on your side. That thou mayest observe to do all according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Now look at this phrase and underline it if you do in your Bible. And turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Joshua was given precise instructions and only we seem to think that that these words are not only for not for us it seems like but we are to do the same thing that God has told Joshua to do don't turn to the left don't turn to the right don't go any other direction whatever God has told us to do obey those words God says don't turn a different direction don't go in a different direction when I tell you the direction trust my leading obey my leading Say, what do you mean? Well, Luke chapter number 5, I know I have you returning in a lot of places, but Luke chapter number 5, the Bible says this in verse number 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. And Simon was answering and said unto him, Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. What Peter is saying, I'm a professional fisherman. I've done this all my life. I know exactly what's going on. I know how to perform what God, what I am trying to do. I know that I've went to the right places. I went to the same places that I've gone to since I was a little boy. I let down those nets every time. And you just begin to think about how whenever Simon was listening to that, what Jesus was preaching and teaching, and he said, go on out there and let that net down. Let your nets down. But when you read it more carefully, Peter says, I will let down the net. 
singular, the only one. He's saying, I'm just going to trust you for this, Lord. I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to obey you, but I'm going to only obey you so far. But thank God, verse number 6 is in the Bible. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. What, what, what Peter was doing was, I'll just I, because you told me to, God, I don't understand why you're doing this, Lord. I don't understand why you're telling me to do this. I've cleaned my nets up. I've mended my nets. I'm tired. I want to go home. <laughs> Looks like some of you are thinking the same thing right now. <laughs> But uh, I want to go. I want to do these things. I, I'm, I'm done with this work today. I take a little rest for right now. But Jesus said, go and do it. And what did he say? Because you said. <laughs> Not because mama told him to. Not because daddy told him to. Not because your mother-in-law or wife told you to. There's some scared men in this church tonight. Glory to God. Not because anybody else told you to do so, but because God, you told me to. But Lord, you told me to do this. I'm going to obey. Boy, we need to obey what God is giving in His leading. And then also, learning is a difficult process. Jonah was a slow learner. I'm going to be honest with you. Jonah was, it, he, he had a hard time. He got on that ship and he was on his way to Tarsus and, 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 and sometimes the decisions that we make bring other people that are innocent people in the midst of a storm. And that's exactly what happened. Those people had nothing to do with it. Those people had nothing to do with God. As a matter of fact, they were trying to figure out which God they needed to pray to in order to get the storm to go away. And then Jonah finally figures out, guys, if you'll take me and throw me overboard, then everything will be okay. Can you imagine? What, what would you say if somebody said, you just throw me over the ship and you'll be fine? Well, well what about you? You'll be fine. Have that ever? This is, this is one thing that, that excited me. And, and, and I know I need to hurry. Uh, but this excited me today because when I was reading and I was studying on this and, and I got on this point, that I realized that when Jonah was thrown overboard, he never saw the calm seas. He didn't see when he hit the water and that great fish came and swallowed him up. He didn't see that God worked the miracle for those people. But his obedience helped other people see the power, the majesty, the greatness of God Almighty. As a matter of fact, if you read on, and we don't have time to go there, as a matter of fact, if you look on to that, when Jonah hits the water, that great fish comes up and swallows him up. I would say that he's still in the middle of a storm, Brother Steve. I would still say that that believer trusting and obeying God and doing what God had told him to do and just say, God, you're telling me to jump out, you're telling me to get thrown overboard, and I'm going to put my life in your hands, I'm going to put everything in your hands, and just because he obeyed didn't cause the storm in his life to stop. But it helped other people to be able to see God and they begin to worship the one true God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's times in my life where, Brother Don, there may be times in my life that when I obey God and do something, it's not the best thing for me. But it's the best thing that God desires. It works out in everything that's supposed to be done. Now, I'm telling you, I get excited when I begin, and I know I feel myself, I'm speeding up. I need to slow back down. But when obeying God, that same God that had told him that, that, that hard work that he was doing, that hard thing that was doing, that hard obedience that Noah was trying to do. In Jonah chapter number 1, verse number 15, they saw the hand of God move. And as Jonah hit that water, it, that storm was happening in his life, continuing on, but he was obeying God. And then all of a sudden, a few days later, three days later, guess what? His obedience comes out, and God puts him right back where he needs to be. Now, my wife's going to get on to me for acting like I just spit. Praise the Lord. Y'all, y'all save me. <laughs> Here we are, just obeying God. And Jonah's put right where he needs to be. But then what does he say to do then? Not only do I need to obey him, not only do I trust him, but number three, and we'll stop. I need to follow.
follow him. No matter what God tells me to do, I'm following in your footsteps. I'm following what is I don't understand, God, why you're leading me this direction. I'm following that way. Mark chapter number 2, verse number 14 says this, And he passes by, speaking of Jesus Christ, and he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the seat, uh, receipt of customs, and he said unto him, Follow me. Two words. Levi, the original name of Matthew the publican, what did he do? And he arose and followed him. See, I don't know about you, but I like to know where I'm going. I'm not one of those backseat riders. Are y'all backseat riders? I, if I'm not driving, I at least want to be in the passenger seat so I know what's fixing to hit me. <laughs> and I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, I rode with our pastor one time. He, he drove one time. And after he got out of the ditch and got back up onto the road, I told him, if you'll pull over, Brother Joe, I promise you, that won't happen again. And so ever since that day, and that was been years and years and years ago, ever since that day, whenever Brother Joe, whenever I'm coming to a car and we're walking up together, guess what happens, Brother Don? He hands me the keys. He has no question about it. I'm driving. I want to know where I'm going. I want to know what's doing. I want to be in control of the situation. I want to make sure. But he said, he didn't say, well, where are we going, Lord? He just said, follow me. But, but God, I, I've got to do this. I've got to take care of this. And after I get done with my day of work, then follow me. But without question, Matthew gets up with certainty. The Bible says in, uh, says in Proverbs chapter number 3, verse number 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him. That word yada actually means to know, to be aware. We need to know what God is thinking, leading, guiding, directing, following Him at all times. To be aware of what He's doing. To be aware of what God is leading is always correct. Isaiah 55 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. You may not understand, but God knows. We don't understand His ways, but we know that He will not lead us astray. It is with certainty that we follow Jesus Christ with no reservations. Don't even wobble. Just go straight for Him with certainty. And thank, thank God it, it, it guarantees safety. I'm sheltered in the arms of God. If I follow him, there's safety. Staying hovering under the, under the hovering wings of God. Proverbs chapter number 3, going on, it begins to talk about how you're staying with God. And it says, Then thou shalt walk thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, they shall, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Say, Brother Shane, I, I don't know that I can go home tonight. Lay my head, pillow my head, and know that my sleep will be sweet. Brother Shane, I'm going to be honest with you tonight. When I go home tonight, I'm probably going to toss and turn before I fall asleep. There's going to be, there's things that are running in my head right now, Brother Shane, that you don't know anything about. How can you say that my sleep can be sweet? Because I can promise you on the authority of the Word of God. And you give it over to Him. You trust Him. You obey Him. You follow Him. And He will make your sleep sweet. To find the wisdom of God and to follow it is one of the greatest blessings in the world. And when to begin to follow Him... He is our protector. He is our stabilizer. He is our courage. He is our peace in the midst of all these things. Just trust Him. Just obey Him. Just follow Him. 
See, we find Peter later on on a shore with Jesus. And I love how Jesus asked him, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Peter, do you love me? Yes. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Just feed my sheep. Just do what I've told you to do. Trust me. Obey me. Follow me. Follow me even when you don't understand. Follow me. Brother Don, I heard that uh, Brother Spurgeon had written a book and he recorded in this book how a man of God had preached for 60 years. He had been a a professor in colleges for 40 some odd years of that. And on his deathbed, he said this, Brother Earl, my theology comes down to this one thing. Trust Jesus Christ. <laughs> we, can, we, can bring, we can come up with all the theology. We can come up with all the systematic theology. We can do the hermeneutics. We can do the homiletics. We can study all these things out. We can, do, we can put all down to it. But everything, Brother Nick, comes down to this one thing. Trust me. Obey me. I don't normally do this, but I wonder if someone tonight just needs to spend a little time around an altar and say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to give it all over to you. Miss Millie, can you come to the piano and play a little trust and obey for us tonight? And we can close out in this way. God, I don't know what you're doing. But I'm trusting you. God, I don't know why you've done this. I don't know why you've allowed this into my life, but I'm going to obey you. God, I don't know what's happening and what's going on. But God, I'm giving it over to you. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much that you've given us the most wonderful guidebook. God, you've given us a wonderful Savior. You've given us a wonderful salvation. And God, when our hearts are broken, and God, when we've gone through these last couple of years, there's many things that have happened in our lives, and we just don't understand that God, I trust, we obey, we follow you. God, give us the direction. God, give us the peace. Give us that comfort. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heads are bowed.